What is the NCR? A society of people desperate to experience comfort, ease, luxury. A society of customers. With all that money pouring in? Give me 20 years and I'll reignite the high technology development sectors. 50 years and I'll have people in orbit. 100 years and my colony ships will be heading for the stars to search for planets unpolluted by the wrath and folly of a bygone generation. Except that didn't happen. Vegas is in ruin and the West Coast is in chaos. Along with Fall of Haman. The new California Republic has withdrawn from the Mojave and Southern California, and the Legion has likely collapsed by now since Caesar has very likely died of a tumor and resulted in a collapsed bunch of warlord states. So with no one in power in New Vegas, one of the most powerful assets is rotting in the wasteland, the Hoover Dam. Seeing as we are noticing some recurring plot points in the prior games, mostly Fallout 3, and Jonathan Nolan's favorite Fallout game is Fallout 3, the Fallout TV show may be planning to retread familiar grounds with the Enclave utilizing Hoover Dam to cleanse or control the wasteland. Now, the Enclave was founded at the highest level of the government and the military, and they were all incredibly, incredibly corrupt. Before the war, though, Project Safe House, which was funded by the Enclave, or the pre-war shadow government, was headed by the United States government, which was intertwined with the Enclave and Baltic affairs. Ultimately, both sides, separate and sovereign, sought to shape the post-nuclear world, and only they would be able to be there to shape it. So plans are put into place to utilize the vaults as experiments for space travel, as post-nuclear selective survival experiments, and most importantly, as a shelter for the best and brightest for a post-war resurgence of a new government. During the now infamous part of Episode 8, when vault Tech supposedly plans to start the Great War, supposedly, big if. Anyways, during the vault Tech meeting in the TV show, while the investors were discussing Vault Experiments ideas, I'm sure you all notice there is a shadowy figure watching from above who Barb notices and seems to know she's being watched by. Perhaps when she was looking down at a pit boy, he sent some sort of message to her to reveal the whole meeting was just to reveal vault wants to start the Great War. I digress. This is likely a member of the Enclave, maybe the president. And it's telling that Barb's personal assistants were frozen in Vault 33 while Bud was turned into a Roomba. Perhaps Barb had some sort of connection to the shadowy figure, very likely, the true person in control of Vault 33's design. If Barb was a part of the pre-war enclave, along with the rest of the frozen vault dwellers in Vault 31, it would explain why Hank and Steph were adept at combat, to say the least, during Moldova's raid, and that Hank was able to use power armor for what we think is the first time he was able to use it, as compared to Maximus, who has extreme trouble even using the rocket boosters. Also, the Enclave seem to have some sort of connection to Vault 33 specifically, because Dr. Wilzig knows exactly what the experiment in Vault 33 is upon meeting Lucy. Maybe the Enclave has some sort of real-time information with Vault 33, or some sort of communications with them. So Mr. House, who was pretty dominant during the meeting and didn't seem all too interested in what vault had to offer, despite that Mr. House and the Enclave do have some similar goals of leaving Earth, but Mr. House, was, he was not a team player. He didn't want to share power, and I doubt the Enclave would have even trusted him. So he's shown to have interacted with vault in the show, though, who act as a pawn or a partner to the Enclave with the vault program, Project Safe House. Uh, it is notable though, right, that Robco, at the very least, was a partner with the Enclave, seeing as they actively use his robots throughout the games. But seeing as Mr. House was wrong about his exact prediction of the war start time by 20 hours, I believe, it's likely Mr. House never even humored vault Tech's plans to start the Great War. Otherwise, he would have likely known an exact start date. I set to work immediately. 
I thought I had plenty of time to prepare. As it turned out, I was 20 hours short. On the day of the Great War, 77 atomic warheads targeted Las Vegas and its surrounding areas. My networked mainframes were able to predict and force transmit disarm code subsets to 59 warheads, neutralizing them before impact. Laser cannons mounted on the roof of the Lucky 38 destroyed another nine warheads. The rest got through, though none hit the city itself. A suboptimal performance, admittedly. Without the Enclave's partnership with Mr. House, Hank would probably not be going to New Vegas to meet him. And seeing the state of New Vegas, it's questionable if Mr. House is even alive. You see, the rule of thumb in Fallout really seems to be if you've got more enemies than allies, you're done for. The Master was against the Wasteland, Vault 13, the Brotherhood, Shady Sands, so he dies. The Enclave was against the NCR, the Brotherhood of Steel, the Vaults, so they die. The Enclave lost again at Fallout 3 and were enemies of Rivet City, the Vaults, the Brotherhood of Steel, the Capital Wasteland as a whole, so they lost. And the Institute, enemy of every single faction, no friends, so we know they lost. It's not really that much of a stretch to assume Mr. House being the enemy of every major faction present in the Mojave and a light piece with the NCR before people say they're allies, Mr. House was likely destroyed. More than likely, Hank is going to the Mojave specifically for the Hoover Dam. He has some sort of plans for it. He clearly, he doesn't like anyone living on the surface. That's very enclave already. Going as far to cooperate in destroying Shady Sands with Betty. I think the Enclave and them use some sort of nuclear weapon against Shady Sands. The Enclave has been shown to have access to nuclear satellites. Think back to Broken Steel when the Enclave nuked Liberty Prime. Rest in peace. And if they truly were members of the Enclave, they will seek to purge any mutants in the wasteland. So the Enclave have the resources to taint the water at Hoover Dam and finish off the crippled New California Republic, and the Brotherhood of Steel for recolonization of the West Coast of the United States and North America as a whole. So, assuming the show writers continue to introduce familiar aspects into the TV show, such as the Enclave, the NCR, and the Brotherhood, it's reasonable to assume they will reuse the story of the Enclave purging the wasteland. I do sort of hope that if the Enclave theory is true, or if it's not true, that Hank ends up meeting Yes Man, and Yes Man's just fallen for uh, Hank's plans to exterminate the wasteland. So, there is a more outlandish theory, though, which is likely the title of the video unless I've changed it, is that Mr. House was brainwashed, indirectly or directly, gaining control of Hoover Dam for the Enclave's future plans. There is some merit to this theory before you shoo it off and don't care about it, the Enclave is being shown at their base working on mental conditioning for their dogs. Look at all those guys move at the same time. And the Enclave is known for brainwashing wastelanders that were in the Responders and Fallout 76, one of the black sheep of the Fallout franchise, not including Brother of Steel. The Enclave also has some mind-controlled death claws in multiple Fallout games now. If we assume Hoover Dam is being taken by the Enclave for some sort of mind control of the wastelanders rather than purification, they would infect the water with some sort of uh, in experimental strain of FEV, maybe, to exert their will. Perhaps the water being served during the vault Tech company meeting was tainted, indoctrinating the heads of multiple companies. This isn't the first time any mind control has been used, if this is the case. Think back to Fallout 1, the Master was able to have some sort of psionic abilities, but we're thinking more of a scientific indoctrination, kind of uh, like the numbers in Black Ops 1, or I don't know, kind of how the super mutants were more impressionable after they were infected with FEB. That could be what they're going for. Even if the Enclave is going for a sort of mind control of the wasteland sort of deal, they would probably still have the end goal of purifying the wasteland. <laughs> the exact same goal as Voltec. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. This is St. Donald Binks, signing out. Your ride's over, Mutie. Time to die.